I went through all the prayers in the Bible. And I realized that all of the prayers in the Bible, Old Testament and New, as far as I can tell, can be captured in one small prayer. And I use this prayer to guide my thoughts when I pray. Just six stanzas. And all the prayers of the Bible would fit under one of these six stanzas. Can I share it with you? See what you think. It's called the pocket prayer. It begins like this. Father, you are good. I need help. They need help. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. On my good days, that prayer is just circulating in my head, a bit like background music. As I'm driving through traffic, Father, Father, you let me call you Father. As I'm heading into a meeting, you're good. You're good. The situation may be bad. The weather may be bad. The economy may be bad. But you're good. You're shot through with goodness. Everything about you is good. I need help. I need help walking into a doctor's office or, or heading into a meeting or even walking down the grocery store aisle way. Lord, I need help. I need help. And they need help. Look at these people, Father. Or my friends or my children. They need help. My president needs help. Our church needs help. But before I say amen, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for another day. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for every heartbeat. Thank you for every breath. Thank you for what hair I have left. Thank you. Thank you for being so good. In Jesus' name, by Jesus' power, at Jesus' invitation, because I'm a blood-bought child of the one true King. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. It's not so much the eloquence of the prayer that makes prayer powerful. Prayer is powerful, not because of the way we pray, but because of the one who hears. Does that make sense? If we ever cause the power of prayer to depend upon the prayer, we're sunk. But if the power of prayer depends upon the one who hears the prayer, we have hope. Because have we not already discovered that God is good and he is our father? I think that's why there are so many simple prayers in the Bible. It's the prayer of Mary, the mother of Jesus. And the wedding began, this problem surfaced, and the wedding problem was simply what? They have no wine. Mary came to Jesus in verse 3. The mother of Jesus said to him, they have no no wine. I would suggest to you that that is a prayer. That is a prayer. It is a request. It is a simple request. It is a four word request in English. They have no wine. That's a very simple statement. There's not much to it. It's just simply a statement of a problem. She doesn't come to Jesus and tell Jesus how to fix the problem. She's not bossy. She's not demanding. She doesn't over-spiritualize the problem. She doesn't say, now, if you were really the son of God, we would never have a problem. She doesn't get all kind of wound up in it. She doesn't even say, now, I'm your mother. You have to do this. She doesn't play any, any clout, doesn't have any power move on him. She simply says, here's a problem. And she takes the problem and she presents it to Jesus. What if the minute you have a problem, you do what Mary did? You put it in a sentence, you walk it across the room, and you present it to him. The power of a simple prayer. So Mary, the mother of Jesus, comes and presents a problem to him. And he says initially, well, my hour has not yet come. And sometimes we take our prayers to Christ and we don't sense an immediate response. We wonder, is he listening? So what did Mary do? Did she point at her watch and say, come on, 
Come on, hurry, hurry. I need a response today. No, look what she did. This is very helpful. Mary, having taken the problem to Christ, Jesus having said, my hour has not yet come, Mary left the problem with him, turned to the servants and said what? Whatever he says. Whatever he says. She literally left the problem with him. Whatever he says, that's what I want. Prayer is not so much asking God to do what I want. Prayer is asking God to do what is right. Prayer is not so much asking God to do what I want, though it is that he is our father, so we can come to him with our requests. But prayer is even more saying, but Lord, what you want is what I want. It's an exercise in trust. It's really a form of worship, isn't it? Results in water becoming 903 bottles of wine. You didn't know that, did you? 903 bottles. He could have filled a wine cell. He could have started a wine store. When Jesus answers a prayer, not only is it tasteful and delightful, it is abundant. It is abundant. And there is a blessing of a missionary by the name of Dr. Helen Rosevere. She was a missionary in the Congo for 20 years. During her fourth year in the Congo, serving at a medical clinic, there was a baby born prematurely and the mother died in childbirth, leaving behind this baby as well as a two-year-old sister. Dr. Rosevear had no access to electricity, hence no incubator, no way of keeping the baby warm. But they did have a hot water bottle, but when the midwife tried to fill it up, it burst. She instructed for the midwife to sleep with the baby to keep the baby warm, and the next day she woke up with the problem on her mind. Dr. Rosevear mentioned the problem to some of the children who lived in a nearby orphanage. And one of the girls, a 10-year-old girl by the name of Ruth said, well, let's talk to Jesus about it. And years later, Dr. Rosevere still remembered the prayer of faith prayed by 10-year-old Ruth. Ruth prayed, please God, send us a water bottle. It'll be no good tomorrow as the baby will be dead. Please send it this afternoon. And while you are at it, would you please send a doll for the little girl's sister so she'll know that you really love her? Dr. Rosevere was stunned. In order for that prayer to be answered, there would have to be the arrival of a parcel that afternoon. In her four years in the Congo, she had yet to receive one single delivery. Besides, who's gonna send a water bottle, a hot water bottle to the equator? Well, someone did. That afternoon, a truck pulled up into the entryway of the medical clinic. A delivery man brought a box to the porch of Dr. Rosevere's cabin. Dr. Rosevere stepped out and here came all the kids to see what was in it. And as she began to tear away the paper, she opened it up and there was some dried fruit, there were some jerseys, there were some books. And down at the bottom of the box, who would have thought there was a hot water bottle? And next to the hot water bottle, a baby doll. That box had been packed and shipped by a Sunday school class somewhere on the East Coast five months earlier and just arrived that day. 